when something really major happens, you're shocked and you're like, what the heck? Mm -hmm. There's a little part of you that's like, about damn time. Like, you know what I mean? You will see me. <laughs> like, I think I'm supposed to do yes. this. Yes. I know I have a bigger message for more people to hear. Mm -hmm. When people want to go viral, don't step into a place that's inauthentic because you're going to have to stay there. Like people pleasing sometimes, yes. you know? Yeah. Can't relate to that at all. <laughs> but I've heard of I've heard You've of the heard concept. Of this thing before. I was good. I did a good thing yep. for, as a good girl, you know? Yes. And I'm like, no, forget that. Why do I feel that what I need is less important than other people? Am I gonna be too much in my head? Am I gonna self-sabotage? Mm -hmm. You know, one of my favorite hobbies. Oh, favorite pastimes. <laughs> And then I started realizing just how much shit that people yeah. don't know about. And we're calling it normal, but it is so, so far from normal. That was a life-changing realization wow. for me. Welcome to Powerhouse Women. Thank you. I'm excited. So happy to have you here. So happy to have you in my life as a friend. You were one of those people who, the moment we connected mm -hmm. on our quick little FaceTime, just, you know, vibe check. Let's right. be honest. You're <laughs> right. like, yes, I, I will be on this podcast, but also let me just check it out. Mm -hmm. But you have always been someone that from afar, following your journey on social media, I felt your authenticity. Mm, and I really you. was excited to sit down with you and get to hear more of your story because you've been through a wild <laughs> couple of years, <laughs> yes. to say the least. Yes, Is that absolutely. Accurate? It's totally accurate. But before I explain that, just thank you for those words and also learning about you and finding out what you do in the world. I'm always inspired by seeing how you bring community together and just I only hope that I can start building community like you have. So super excited to be here and grateful. Yeah. yeah. But yes, it's been a crazy few years. <laughs> it has. And, you know, we'll get to share so many of yeah. the little pieces of this story because I think a lot of us can relate to some mm -hmm. of the themes of these last couple of years for you. Oh, yeah. But one of the first things that we talked about was just the fact that you've had a very I was going to say intentional, but you can share the story behind it because you said that it actually wasn't um, a departure from social media for, for quite yes. a while. Yeah. And you do have a bigger following. So tell us a little bit about what was behind that decision, intentional or not. <laughs> right. I Everyone says like, oh, man, it's so inspiring. I wish that I could take a year and a half off of social media. And I was not planning on doing that. I was very excited at that time. I was doing a lot of press. I was going everywhere. I was starting to build community. I was, I was, I had so much energy. Like I was so excited to just really get started. And you know how when you feel off, but you just, oh, it's fine. I probably need to take some more supplements or something. You know, you, we, we put it to the side and I did that for so long that my body started to be like, listen, <laughs> either knock, knock, knock. <laughs> exactly like oh do I need to get louder like so yeah. I started having all these crazy symptoms and I would ignore them and then it got worse and it got worse to the point where I was literally having to push through mm -hmm. work like I would go to I got booked to do a very very big event I was really excited about it and in between takes I felt like I was going to pass out mm -hmm. and you could see it and it was like, I, if you watch it now, you can see like, okay, something's off with her. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but I was for some reason gaining maybe like a few pounds every few days. And every nothing, few days. Yes. And nothing wow. that I did stopped it. Diet, exercise, nothing. To the point where I was getting so high up that my legs hurt, my joints hurt, like something was wrong. So I decided, okay, I'm going to go start seeing as many doctors as I can. And everyone would be like, we don't know. Get more sleep. Try to be vegan. Like what they, they couldn't tell me what was going on. And I think when your health changes, when you're a person, I've always been very healthy. I've always, yeah. I haven't been health conscious. I've just been lucky. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like my habits yeah. did not reflect yeah. someone who was health conscious. I just kind of never, I never really got the flu. Mm -hmm. And so to start having crazy health symptoms at a time where you feel like things are really taking off is so layered and tricky because you know that you need to handle it, 
But you you start to realize, well, at least I started to realize that a lot of my feelings of worth were tied up in what I could go do or how I could help other people. So the mm-hmm. more you know sick that I got, it wasn't just a physical downtime. It I started to really get into a dark place. Also because I didn't have answers. Yeah. Like it was just like, what is this gonna be? So I kind of went into a shell. Yeah. And that shell is kind of what took me from social media. So it wasn't that I was like, you know what? No more social media. It was more so like, I don't even know what this is. Like, I can't explain it. I don't recognize myself in the mirror. I don't recognize how I feel every day. Some days I didn't even want to get up. And I mean, if it wasn't for Jesse, like there were days that I probably wouldn't have gotten up. It was really, really tough. And I Mm -hmm. think because I'm such a, you got this, you can do this. Like, you know, don't give up. I think having a blow that serious to where I was like wearing a heart monitor at one point, like literally trying to figure out what was wrong with me. I think it it really changed me a lot Mm -hmm. as far as how I showed up in a room and how I showed up in the world. And for clients, like it it took me through a period of time where I had to kind of rediscover like, you know, who I was and what I felt made me worthy. You know what I mean? I really, really feel that on such yeah. a deep level. Mm-hmm. And to to give people context, the majority of your work is, is as an actress, right? Mm-hmm. So very much if you're not showing up and doing these jobs, mm-hmm. you're not earning money. And then add in there the identity thing that I think we can all really, really relate to. Yeah. Talk to me more about that part, about the journey that sent you on yeah. of looking at the relationship between your worth Mm -hmm. or whatever word you would put to it and either it's productivity or it's acknowledgement or it's any of the things that we think we're chasing after that we don't even realize it's a losing game how 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 did that journey unfold for you during this time well acting I'm I'm still pretty new at I did a lot of commercial work and I was mm-hmm. just moving over to start trying to do theatrical but what I was very solid in is mentorship for new entrepreneurs that was mm-hmm. my that was my every day mm. and not being able to show up for people and, and I realized just how much value I put on being able to show up for others and it was almost yeah. like I felt like I was punishing myself in different ways for not being able to show up for others, not realizing that I was showing up for myself. Like I, it was like, am I not worthy of that same attention that I give other people? Like, so it was crazy to kind of realize that I wasn't valuing myself as much as I did the people that I, that I help. Mm -hmm. And it took so much deep work that I don't think I could have shown up. You know how people say, you know, meet us in the messy middle. It was like, I didn't even know what to offer at that point because I needed at least a perspective where I could understand it enough to show up. But I started doing everything possible to connect with myself, connect with my inner child, understand where these what's underlying here that's Mm -hmm. causing you to think that you're not worthy of, you know, anything because you can't do certain things. It was Mm -hmm. in the do for me. It wasn't in the being. Yeah. And. Once I started that journey, it gave me the it gave me the get up and go to start seeing every single kind of specialist. I kind of just took on the attitude like, all right, you know what? Listen, <laughs> like I'm not about to just sit here and let it get, you know, let it get worse and worse. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go to I went to every kind from girl hypnotherapy like the weirder the better, the okay. weirder the better. I'm Anything all for that it. I could I'm find. All for it. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything I could find. Wow. I went for it. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, Mm -hmm. let's try it. And what happened during that time is not only did I start getting answers, I started getting better. And then I started realizing just how much shit, I mean, stuff. And we can say the (laughs) real one. We can say the real (laughs) word on here. That people don't know about. Yes. So much right. stuff that affects our health and well-being that nobody talks about, mm-hmm. that doesn't get talked about at all. And I was just opened up to this whole new world by trying to heal myself. Mm. So it made me, it opened me up to this new world of anyone who would listen. I would be like, oh my God, did you, have you been cycle thinking? Like, you know, anything that I could. <laughs> I got the ring. <laughs> exactly. See, nobody, I mean, I yeah. know in the community that I that yeah. I have, like, I don't hear about certain things so much. And we don't talk about hormones. Yes. We don't talk about, right. you know, PCOS. We don't talk about these things. Yeah. So it opened my mind up not only to 
things in the wellness field that were that felt very whitewashed to me that I never was very mm-hmm. interested in, mm-hmm. honestly, mm-hmm. to different ways of taking care of myself on a daily basis and making that a, a practice that I'm committed to just as much as I'm committed to other, you know, to other people. Mm-hmm. So it was a long journey, but it kind of came with it was like a necessary transformation because mm-hmm. I feel like I went through that so that I could fully show up in a way that was embodying what I want for others. I can't yeah. do that if I don't fully embody it. Yeah. And I think even though it was hard, it was necessary because I'm good now. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm feeling amazing, but I needed that. I think wow. to, to really show up for whatever, for this next phase that's coming. Mm. Yeah. And Obviously, we'll, there's a whole bigger, bigger yes. purpose and a bigger mission behind that. But I want to hear some of those realizations that were radical to you in the moment mm-hmm. when you learn them that were affecting your health without you even realizing it. Like mm-hmm. if we're girlfriends and you just had that like intuitive healing session or you just mm-hmm. had that that moment where you didn't even put together how much. There's so many things affecting our well-being that yeah. go so far beyond the traditional medical system. Mm-hmm. What were some of the the most surprising things that you you would say most women especially don't even realize? I think getting in touch with and just even recognizing how my nervous system affects everything else. Like I I would five years ago or so, I did that wasn't even part of my vocabulary. Nope. I'm like, didn't even know I had one. No, exactly. Right? I'm like, what? If I go back five years. <laughs> yes. Exactly. And so yeah. now being really hyper conscious of how interactions affect my nervous system, how like how my body I've always felt very disconnected, you know, mm-hmm. from because I've suffered trauma, you know, as a kid. So mm-hmm. it caused me to be very disassociated with my body. Yeah. So I don't really know when I'm stressed or tense. And so mm-hmm. now having that understanding and like diving into it more. I'm a totally different person. I listened to that first yeah. before, you know, do I feel, is this going to be good for me? Is this going to be a good opportunity? I'm like, how does this feel within my nervous system? How yeah. am I, you know, what am I feeling inside first and allowing that to guide me first? Mm. That was a big change for me. Yes. And yeah. I remember saying to someone, this was at a time when powerhouse women was really growing. It's, it's been on this really exciting journey, Mm -hmm. but I remember going to someone, it was right on the heels of one of our big live events, which is a very activating time. Yes. (laughs) But I, I would have told you back then, and I still believe this to be true. It it really is me in my full light, my full power. It's, I love facilitating community, but I remember going to get a massage Mm -hmm. and this was like not a normal massage. (laughs) I didn't realize it at the time I was seeing someone and I just said, I just can't, I feel like my sis, my whole body is like up here Mm -hmm. and I just can't drop back in like to my physical body. And I didn't Mm -hmm. have the words to even describe Describe it, it. but the symptoms were there. Mm -hmm. So for someone who doesn't have the word nervous system in their vocabulary Mm -hmm. or how would you even start to describe symptoms to watch for or how does this show up in people's lives? And we're calling it normal, but it is so, so Not, far from normal. It gets me emotional sometimes because I realize that I've been doing it since I was a kid. And it was like my reaction to things that I had to deal with as a child. Those same symptoms happen as an adult. Like I notice and and Jesse notices a lot when I'm not noticing it is that my shoulders go all the way up to my ears and I'm just like, uh huh. Yeah, totally. Like, you know, I'm being normal, but my yeah, you look like a football player. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the shoulder pads are like up here. <laughs> That's why I don't wear shoulder pads like that. Like, already, I don't need them. Don't right? need them. <laughs> I'm uh, always I wish I could say of, I'm like, um, what do you call that? I'm just like, I'm not high strung, but I'm tense almost. Wound. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is kind of embarrassing, but like I'll <laughs> go to the bath. Like, when I notice mm-hmm. it is when I actually sit down to go to the bathroom. You're like, damn. I don't like- know what it is about that <laughs> moment because there's not really anything else to do in that moment, but pee. Mm-hmm. And I'll notice it's like a full two inches. Yes. Me too. I'm surprised they're not touching like mm-hmm. my hoop earrings at the time. Mm-hmm. And Again, I would have told you like, oh, that's just because like, I'm just on. I'm just on. Yeah. It's really, 
when you start to realize just how wound up you are, at times you realize how much you miss because you're not able to be receptive, mm. you know, in the way that you should be, especially as someone who is a leader. You know, you're mm-hmm. someone who people look to and it's really important for you to be able to receive mm-hmm. whatever messages mm-hmm. you're supposed to be getting. And when we're so we're walking around like that, you know, we can't receive anything like, you know, Ooh. so that's another part of it. It's not just the physical part. It's also am I able to to walk on the path that I'm supposed to and receive what I need to receive as I'm doing it, you know, which is a whole different level of it, you know? Okay, so let's talk, let's go a little bit deeper on this topic of receiving. Mm -hmm. This has been a theme today, Mm -hmm. and I told you this. You're my Mm -hmm. last conversation of a day full of these powerful conversations, and I don't think it's a coincidence that this topic that we're talking about Mm -hmm. keeps coming up. Mm -hmm. This means that not only do I need it right now, but Mm -hmm. I think there's so many more people listening. So receiving. Talk about your journey in understanding your relationship to receiving. Man, there's so many different areas of my life where I've had to train myself to accept receiving. Um, I mean, you could start with, you know, love life. Mm -hmm. You could start with, you know, just blessings that you get as far as your career, like different things. But I would say receiving as far as messaging or like, I guess you, I don't know how you want to explain it, but more so receiving insight. Yeah. Like the downloads. Yeah. Yeah. So in that respect, I could remember a very distinct moment where I was Feeling that, you know, I had a couple posts on social media that were gaining a lot of traction and I felt like, what am I supposed to be saying? Mm -hmm. Like, what could be the most helpful? This was um, in 2020. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it's not really about me Mm -hmm. because I know this moment will pass. Mm -hmm. I know that how that's how social media is. People, Mm -hmm. they're going to jump to the next thing. But if I can say anything right now, what it, what would be the most helpful or impactful? I'm open to receiving and just being a vessel for whatever that is. And I was washing dishes and I just said that out loud. Like, I'm open to be a vessel. If there's a platform growing here, it doesn't matter what I feel like saying. What would be the most helpful? And that was it. I just continued washing dishes and it had to be maybe 24 hours later when I made the video that went really, really viral. Yeah. So that was probably the most impactful moment of allowing yourself to be open to receive mm-hmm. because you realize that it has nothing to do with you. Right. Like you are literally just like the bucket for the water. Like yep. you're, the, you're the best bucket for right. that particular, you know what I mean? Whatever yes. that message may be. Yeah. But it's really not about you. And it took me a while to mm-hmm. kind of realize that it's not a one off kind of thing. When you align yourself, you will be able to remain a vessel for whatever it is that you're good at explaining or mm-hmm. giving to other people. And yeah, that was a, it was a life changing realization wow. for me. Yeah. I didn't realize the correlation between that and the video that ultimately did go, not just mm-hmm. a little viral. It went, <laughs> it went viral. Yeah. Here's my question on the other side of that. So knowing that that message came through in the way that it did, you didn't post that video hoping that millions of people would see it or right tens of thousands of people would start following you on Instagram. Did it help you at all deal with all the attention that came from it? Because it was kind of from this surrendered place of, Mm. I was just sharing what I opened myself up to be a vessel to share. Yeah. I mean, I know you probably can relate to this, but sometimes when something really major happens, you you're shocked and you're like, what the heck? Mm -hmm. There's a little part of you that's like, about damn time. Like, you know, <laughs> you will see me. <laughs> like, I think I'm supposed to do yes. this. Like, yeah. I've always known as a coach that I was supposed to. Mm-hmm. It wasn't about me being like, you guys want my picture? Like, you know, it wasn't that. I was never, that was never for me. It was always to use my voice for yeah. other people. And I yeah. accepted that a long time ago. Yeah. So being able to see, oh, this is how it works. I'm not relying on just what I know. I'm also allowing myself to be opened up. So I kind of, I was surprised, but not fully surprised mm-hmm. because I kind of felt like that. Oh, this is how it works. Mm. OK, so, you know, that this is this is how it goes then. And it was 
I just kind of was afraid that, you know, am I going to be able to remain open enough? Am I going to be too much in my head? Am I going to self-sabotage? You mm. know, one of my favorite hobbies. Oh, favorite pastimes. <laughs> right? Monday through Sunday. Right? I'm like, am I going to, how can I allow myself or train myself to remain open enough to do whatever this is that I'm supposed to do? Okay, so but, yeah. what happened on the other side? I got very good at acceptance. Mm. And not just with what I'm supposed to do, but more so what's happening to me in any given situation. When I was sick, when I was, you know, ballooning up and, and gaining so much weight and not understanding that side of it and then coming down, feeling terrible, feeling okay. Like I just started to be more, instead of being like, Ugh, about everything, I just mm -hmm. started to ask, what am I supposed to learn? Mm -hmm. What What is the purpose of this particular struggle? And having more acceptance for it. That's the only way I was able to get on the other side of it, mm -hmm. is to have more acceptance for it. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to practice more radical acceptance because I don't think you can really change things while complaining and being in stress about how it's going. So, so true. You know what I mean? So good. Yeah. yeah. So I'm. I'm, it's a battle every day, like to to not focus so hard on what I want to change, accept it and put that energy towards the changing of it. And, mm -hmm. you know, you're, and you're less, you're coming from less of a lack mentality when you do that too. Yes. Yeah. You know, especially when we're building these platforms, when there is a lot of visibility and you are putting the most authentic version of you out mm -hmm. there on the internet. Yeah. It can also bring up, for, for me, it's brought up a lot of fears. It's brought up a lot of things for me to see so that I can transform it and continue to serve at bigger levels. Was there any of that that happened oh. when all of a sudden you just had a lot more visibility? You already had beautiful content. You had a beautiful yeah. platform. You were coaching. Was there anything that the experience, now looking back, even mm -hmm. at like the version of us who might have been like, oh, that's going to be amazing when that happens, right? Yeah. Because I'm expecting it. Mm -hmm. I know I have a bigger message for more people to hear. Mm -hmm. Was there anything that surprised you on the other side of it, oh. of having that much attention yeah. all at once? So much yeah. surprised me. Well, for one, yes, to answer your first question, a lot of fears came up because it was such a inflammatory topic mm -hmm. and something that you receive death threats over I was very careful to make sure I had to be conscious of how I was showing up because now you're yep. like whether you want it to be or not now you're this representative yeah. which I never signed up to be but I'm like hey I, this is where I find myself so mm -hmm. I was very conscious of making sure that I represented in a certain way and then also fears I was afraid of everything. I was afraid of, I guess you could say, like, not informed enough on something that happened or not giving enough of my platform to someone else. Not, I mean, girl, the fears just, I mean, you could just pick them out of the box. I mm -hmm. had so many, to, am I going to offend people I care about? Are these, right. is this dangerous? Am I making a decision that might be dangerous for my family? Like, mm -hmm. just all kinds of fears. But mm. internally, I think it was obviously the imposter syndrome that shows up because I think you can get comfortable. You know, you have your your recurring, you know, clients on your retainer and you've yep. got your little community of people and you're like, I'm good with this. Yep. I'm, you know, yep. we, we love each other here. This is mm -hmm. good for me. And then when you're kind of, you know, raised up out of that yeah. and into something bigger, you're like, hold up. I was I was comfortable with my I was good. Yeah. <laughs> I knew. And it's it's so true, right? Because mm -hmm. we we almost co-sign these agreements that we don't realize we're making with yep. all the people around us. But then when there's all this new energy yes. and a lot of new attention and then there's just a bigger conversation that you don't even have the time to sit down and think like, well, where where is mm -hmm. my voice in, in, in this? all of this? Yeah. And like you said, on the other side of it, I learned so much. Like I learned that we're in an industry where people will it's almost like moths to a flame like mm -hmm. they just want to be they attract to whatever's happening yeah whatever's yeah popping at that moment they're just like Shoo, and they're mm -hmm. just like you're my best friend you know like you're it's, like have we met <laughs> <laughs> there are some people mm -hmm. who that's how they're they guide their decisions on who to align themselves with mm -hmm. um it it gave me a real wake-up call as far as 
aligning myself with new people because I'm very open. I'm always making new friends. I'm always like, yeah, this is my new friend, you know? Right. And just having to have We've that been discernment. in the bathroom. Uh-huh. Yeah. Having that dis- yeah. discernment. Like, okay, did you get canceled? Is that why you're here? You know, like, <laughs> it's like I had to, I was a little naive in that way. Yes. You know, in the, yes. in the beginning. But also visibility comes with certain the things you have to accept. And if you don't like those things, then you shouldn't be visible. Like online, you're not a, you're not a person to Mm -hmm. people. You're an idea. You're a, I guess you could say, um, a concept. Mm -hmm. So people speak to you differently. People react differently than they would sitting, having a conversation. And if that's, if that freaks you out, then you shouldn't be. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's it's very different. The way that people decide to approach you and talk to you. It's wild. I never thought about it that way. That actually is the perfect, I think, perspective to put around that is understanding. And I think it even helps me filter some of the negativity if it comes. I don't Mm -hmm. haven't really gotten a lot of it, but any that does come through this sense of they're not actually even reacting to you as a person. They're reacting to the concept that you represent. Mm -hmm. What do you think people misunderstand about the idea of going viral? It's very glamorized. Um, I think that people believe that that's it. Like, it's like, as soon as that happens, we're off to the races. Right. Mm -hmm. And that can be the case for Mm -hmm. some people, but it's not especially now with like TikTok and things like that, that we didn't, we weren't really all into TikTok Mm -hmm. like that back then. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a moment. Yeah. And it's up to you to use that moment to go forward into what it is that you really want to do. If you went viral for something that you don't normally talk about, that you don't even like talking about, Mm -hmm. I don't recommend becoming that. You know what I mean? Like some people are like, oh, well, that's why I didn't decide like, okay, well, now I'm putting everything to the side and now I'm an activist and now I'm this. So like, it's like, I didn't, I never got wrapped up yeah, in yeah. the attention. And I, I really, if anyone is out there saying like, you know, I really want to go viral. I want to make a post go viral. It's just like, know who you are mm-hmm. and what you're trying to achieve. Because when that moment does come, you might, you, it's like a tornado and you end up a, a, across town. You know what I mean? Like you got to kind of know where you're going and, and mm-hmm. how this can help you rather than just going where it takes you, if that yeah, makes sense. Totally you know what I mean? Does. It sounds crazy saying it out loud, but I hope it makes sense. No, it yeah. does. And it, what I hear from it is it goes back to the authenticity piece that mm-hmm. is immediately what drew me into your content, your page, you getting to meet you as a human. Mm-hmm. But backing it up with that intentionality piece, being really intentional with what is, if we were to go viral, what's the message we want to go viral for? Mm -hmm. And do people see more of that from us when Mm -hmm. they come to our pages, when they come to wherever, right? Yeah. And I feel like in this stage of life, whenever, that sounds like such an old person thing to say, (laughs) it's the relationships for me that when I meet the person in in person, yeah, you feel like you're getting not just the same, but an even better, an even more authentic version than what you see online. Mm-hmm. And I think people can feel that. They can really, really feel it. If it's a real mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. And I, I didn't really, I didn't really talk too much about that topic at the time. It mm-hmm. was the moment that we were going through and yeah. I was just getting on speaking as myself. I didn't yeah. have a script or anything, but that was that's just how I am. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. I'm not like, okay, so here's how I'm going to be for this thing. It's like, yeah. no, I just was talking passionately about something I truly cared about Yeah, as with everything else. So mm-hmm. yeah, I, I definitely think when people want to go viral, they're like, they're trying to do that. Don't step into a place that's inauthentic because you're going to have to stay there. You know what I mean? Like, don't try to... <laughs> don't try to become something unless Mm -hmm. that's what you want to do you Mm -hmm. know I can't tell you what to do but you know try to stay where you're gonna live yeah you know try to stay in that space that you're most comfortable with so that you can continue Mm -hmm. you know and the audience that is attracted to you can be there authentically with you yeah so I'm so curious to hear as you are getting ready to kind of reemerge into the social yes. media world and mm-hmm. I can feel the intention that you're putting into this mm-hmm. decision and this stage and what you want to talk about. 
Take me behind the scenes. What has that looked like? The decision of when and then mm-hmm. the decision of how. How do you want to reintroduce yourself? Yeah. What well, have you thought I'm through? so different. Like I yeah. feel like a different person mm-hmm. than before. I was very hesitant because I'm kind of like, I've gotten so used to not, it's just not a big part of my life. Like I travel, I do all kinds of stuff and I never post it. I kind of, you know what I mean? It feels weird coming back to social media. Um, But I feel really good about being able to be a lot more personal and share Mm -hmm. more about what I've gone through and Mm -hmm. what I've learned. Mm -hmm. And I feel pumped about that. I feel like, oh my, like I, my friends and family, they have to hear about it. So now if the people have to hear about it, I'm like, listen, (laughs) I got to tell you about this. Like, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm excited to introduce people to concepts and ideas and practices that I knew nothing about before getting sick and before going through this whole journey. So the decision to come back is more so just based on my enthusiasm. Yeah. Like I would have stayed off another year. Like yes. I didn't, you know what I mean? Like I didn't feel like that need wasn't there anymore. Yeah. Which can sound crazy to some people like what? Like, yes. you know, you, but I, I still coached. I still had my same people since before, you know, everything happened. And I kind of felt I was okay with that. But now there's, like you said, there's intention because I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm, I feel passionate about this and mm-hmm. I want to get other people, you know, Mm-hmm. In on the in on the journey too. Okay, I am really curious to hear because yeah. you coach entrepreneurs too, mm-hmm. and I'll get this question sometimes: of Can I grow my business without being present on mm-hmm. social media? You mm-hmm. were still supporting your business mm-hmm. without leveraging social media. What would you say to someone who, for whatever reason, just feels like they don't want that to be a really big part of their life? So it's funny because I was coaching before social media was popular, mm-hmm. so I kind of never rested on it as it was always word of mouth it was always you know interpersonal relationships I would say there's so many different ways to show up on social media now that we didn't even realize back in the day if you don't want to be front and center you can find so many different ways to share and to provide value and to you know help the people Mm -hmm. who you want to work with without being front and center But for people who want to just be completely off social media, it's possible you can do that, but you just got to get creative just like with everything else, because that's where most people go. They go to social media to find what they need. I go to social media to find, you know, where do I find a humidifier? Like, let me ask TikTok, like, you know, so you just have to get creative with it. There's I'll never tell you there's no way to do Mm -hmm. a particular thing because somebody's figuring it out. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 And I do think it's what we're in this world where we want to get to know the person behind the brand. And Mm -hmm. that's really what social media has given us access to. Yeah. I mean, I was I heard someone the other day who was talking about like they didn't want to go see a dentist if they didn't know like who the person was behind Mm -hmm. like the dentist chair. So it's how do we balance that like this? I I think this almost expectation to have a personal brand Mm -hmm. while building a business. Yeah, I feel like you have one whether you want it or not, right? Like, even if you're the person who never comes around and they're like, now you're an enigma, like, that's your brand. Like, you know what I mean? So totally. it's like, if you want one or don't want one, it doesn't matter, yeah. you have one. I come from a place of doing what feels good first, not comfort zone good, because a lot of times we do have to push ourselves outside of that in order to get to where we want to be. I mean, what feels real to you? What mm-hmm. do you where do you see yourself and where do you want to go and will this help you get there? And if so, how can you do this in a way that doesn't feel gross? I was just talking to a friend who has a very successful fashion business, but she's not much online. And she's like, Mm -hmm. the first thing she said was, I don't want to be showing people what I eat for dinner. And I think some people have a concept of what it means to be on social media. And all you have to do is show them examples and be like, look, you can do it this way. You can show behind the scenes of a show and like Mm -hmm. those things aren't, they're not intrusive. You can find what feels good to you Mm -hmm. um, and make it happen. It doesn't have to look like everyone else. You know what I mean? There's just so much gold here because the more I'm realizing how this journey has looked for me, pairing the wellness Mm -hmm. with the success or the the ambition, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. I'm in a season right now of going back to something you said earlier disconnecting my results 
-hmm. from doing Mm -hmm. and focusing on the results that come from who I'm being. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is such a similar season that you're in. What has that looked like for you in this season? Man, when you put the brakes on everything and, you know, you're not doing podcasts, you're not going out and meeting new people and things like that, you really, you have no choice but to just be. Um, Mm -hmm. And if you're basing everything on the results of your doing, you're going to be in a bad spot. Mm -hmm. And I was at first. I just felt like, man, this is, what what is happening here? Am I just going to give up everything? Am I just going to? You know, just move away and just be like, this is it. I'm done. Yeah. But the being part, I think, for me is paying close attention. I'm a manifesting generator. Generator. Really? Yeah. Okay. So I I have to pay close attention to how I'm feeling Mm -hmm. before I make any decisions, before I make any moves, and I don't make apologies for it. So, like, I before I would be like, what do you need? I got, you know, I was very... um, (laughs) aware of how I was making people feel and am mm-hmm. I you know more like people pleasing sometimes yes. you know yeah and I can't relate to, to that at all, <laughs> at all but I've heard of I've heard You've of the heard concept of before, yeah. I've heard of the concept <laughs> for me I'm like I don't consider myself extreme but I, yeah. I did notice that I was sacrificing what I that wanted part. and felt mm-hmm. to make sure other people were pleased with me or mm-hmm. you know what I mean just I was good. I I, I did a good thing yep. for, as a good girl, you know? Yes. And I'm like, no, forget that. Like, how am I feeling? Does this feel off to me? Does this feel aligned? And not being, not having that lack mentality where I'm just like, well, if I don't do this and then, you know, just knowing right. like I'm going to make the best decisions for myself. And even if I don't, I'm still going to be good. And like just having a different feeling about the way I move and the way I operate rather than being like, <gasps> If I don't do this, this isn't right. You know, I'm going to miss out. You, there right. isn't anything to miss out on because what's supposed to be for you is going to be whether you're off social media for a year and a half or not. Like, you know, mm-hmm. it's it's not going anywhere if it's meant for you. And mm-hmm. so that that has helped me a lot. So speak to the part. There was something else you said earlier, too, about having to start paying radical attention to even how your body felt mm-hmm. around certain people is is really what I, that wasn't the word you said, but mm-hmm. that's what I took from it. Mm-hmm. How much has that been a part of the healing process? I think it was one of the things that I worked on because I knew how much I craved more community. Mm-hmm. Being isolated, I live far. You know, I live in Laguna. I'm not in the, you know, in the hub of all the action. And so I lacked community in person a lot. Yeah. And I knew that if I wanted to start building that and started, you know, to connect with people, I had to kind of get over my social anxiety. Mm-hmm. Like I felt, you know, when you're going through illness, you kind of feel like, Anytime someone talks to you, they're like, how are you today? You know, like, so I kind of felt like I didn't feel like myself. Yeah. So once I started to, you know, get back out and start to make new relationships and new friendships, I realized that I can trust my intuition. I can trust what I'm feeling about people when I meet them and it won't lead me astray. I don't Mm -hmm. have to, you know, worry about that decision. I'm really listening to myself and being like, does this feel Okay, mm-hmm. this is where I'm going to go without worrying like, oh, well, she has this or she's that and I need to be connected to this person. You know how it is. This yeah. is Los Angeles. Yeah. This is how a lot of people think. I, I had to let go of it and be like, is this person going to be in my life in 10 years? Like that's more where I was coming from with it. So that's how it factored in is just coming back and getting in touch with more people and yeah. navigating that. Yeah. And I really resonated when you said the piece about and not apologizing mm-hmm. for The scenarios where it just, for whatever reason, isn't a match. Or for me, I really experienced that around breaking some of those people-pleasing tendencies, Mm -hmm. those habits Mm -hmm. that, if I was honest, contributed to the place that my nervous system was in because I was always filtering things through through the question of, what was best for their Mm well-being thinking I was actually doing them a favor when I was just bringing my own shitty energy Mm -hmm. into it because I was like I don't want to be here Mm -hmm. so I'm just curious how you navigate that how you teach other women to navigate that because I think if we're if we're blending the two the business and the the well-being as a whole 
really looking at our relationships and like these patterns that were they might have gotten us this far, but they just aren't really supposed to come where we're going next. Mm-hmm. That was a big, big one for me. So oh, yeah, for sure. How how do you help people work through that in the beginning stages? Because I, I think that people pleasing tendency or just serving others, putting others needs before ours mm-hmm. is something so many women yes. deal with. A hundred percent. I think we all have these agreements that we've made with ourselves. And a lot of times they come from our mom our you know the women we've seen in our lives mm-hmm. like we kind of get this role put on us immediately that others come before you and that's just how it is it's it's i mean i won't speak for every single person but i know from my experience the women in my family were they would lay everything down for everyone else mm-hmm. and so that's kind of like you just get the messaging it's an agreement that what you need is put there yeah. and then make sure everyone else is good first and i just think it's recognizing those agreements and those things that you've just accepted as fact before carrying on. It's like, okay, why do I feel that what I need is less important Mm -hmm. than other people? What, what, where did I get that? And how did I start to believe that and kind of go deep and uncover where that messaging came from? Mm. Because not everyone gets it. You know what I mean? Not guys don't get it all the time. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Sometimes, but I'm just sure like, as yeah. a woman, you realize, yeah. like, oh, this is ex- it's expected of me, like, mm-hmm. right? So kind of just uncovering where those messages came from and then finding out where am I applying that in my life? Am I doing it at work? Mm-hmm. Where am I actually acting out these agreements? Yeah. And starting from there. Yeah. So as you get ready to enter this new phase, it really is this this transition from the season you've been in to a new season for you, a new season of impact, whatever it holds, what are you most excited for? I'm most excited to connect. It's not really just about, I'm excited to put this out and I'm excited to put this out. I'm excited Mm -hmm. about how what I do is going to connect me to other like-minded people like I'm over the moon excited about that Mm -hmm. and I feel like every turn that I've made in my life it was supported by the people that I met you know what I mean and so and it it makes me emotional because I think about how much I've learned how much I've taught how much I've gained from being around incredible women and just being so isolated for so long and, and not being around that energy, I'm just like, give me, give me, like, <laughs> like, let's talk about it. Like, I'm, I'm really excited to just have that energy again. And I think that's what I'm most excited about mm. is just not only, and also being very unfiltered and being like, look, this is what I went through. You might be going through this, but let me just, I'm not coming from the coach place all the time anymore. Yeah. I'm actually coming from the place of a student. Like, hey, here, here's what I'm learning right now. And I don't know it all yet, but I'm going to tell you what I have learned. Like, you know, and so that's exciting to me, too, is just not always having the answers. Like a lot of people expect you to, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, actually, I don't know shit about this. But yes. I'm yeah. curious about it. You want to learn it with me? Like, so that's mm-hmm. exciting to me, too. Yeah, I can't wait on a selfish level to learn vicariously through yeah. all the things that you're going to be sharing, because I was telling you even before we started the themes that are coming up for your life the themes that you've Mm -hmm. been through are things that I'm seeing everywhere. Yeah. So we need more of us to be sharing about it and talking about it. And the fact that you're so generous to take your own pain and bring it into a season of purpose Mm -hmm. is just the most beautiful thing. I just really feel so lucky that we got to connect and I can't wait for more of this, more connection. I can't wait for it too. I'm happy to to just out of the blue really yeah. connect with you and have this synergy. And I'm excited for it in the future. I'm excited for it for people to kind of get this conversation, which yeah. is, um, I haven't spoken about any of this. This isn't something that I really have been open about online. So, yeah. Well, thank you for, I mean, I don't take that lightly at all. Yeah. Just trusting uh, me and this platform to be a safe place for that. Of course. Of course, if people want to connect with you, I want you to tell them where, but I I have maybe a deeper form of that question, which is just what can we be doing to support you most right now? What can I as an individual, but then people listening, 
be doing to support you right now? Just tune in. There's a lot coming up. and <laughs> Wink, wink. Yeah, there's a lot coming <laughs> up. And I would say tune in and just kind of like, you know, tap in and check it out because yeah. I feel like the people who are supposed to be there, it's not like a viral post where just anyone, everybody and their mom will show up. It's yep. more so like people are attracted to what resonates with them. So I'm excited to kind of have my real people show up. So mm. yeah, I would say that's that's how they can support. And we'll link everything in the show notes, mm-hmm. but where's your favorite place to show up and create those like digital connections with people? Definitely my newsletter, Iverly.com. Just just my name. People can sign up, but I'm pretty messy there. I'm not very polished. I'm like, mm-hmm. listen, this is what I'm dealing with. This is what's happening. What's going on with you? Like I'm I just yeah. I kind of took away that, you know how in the coaching industry where it's like you know, you've got the perfect headshot of you <laughs> typing in your computer like, with the mug. You know what I mean? I'm like, and I don't even drink shit. coffee. Mine's got wine in but it. But you got to have that mug, though, if you're doing a photo shoot, you know. Yes. So I'm I'm good. I'm happy to be like oh. done with all that. You know what I'm talking yeah, about. Know. Like, Listen, I went down a rabbit hole and I was sharing all these photos on social media because I also had a health and wellness phase where it's like, yeah. are you a health influencer if you're not cradling an apple and at least mm-hmm. a few photos? Oh, the bowl? Like, like the coach the- version of that. <laughs> Yes. You all know. Yes, exactly. I'm so happy to kind of be like (laughs) away from that and just being like, this is where I'm at right now. And I'm Uh, hoping that, you know, you guys feel me and you can go along with me and not so perfect all the time. Well, (laughs) I'm craving more of that. I think that's even what I'm loving about getting to do these podcasts in person Mm -hmm. is get to feel someone's heart and their energy and just allow the conversation to flow from there. So this was one of one of my favorites. I know I'm not supposed to have favorites, but (laughs) it was. Um, I just have one more question, which is something that's so fun to ask, especially new friends as I'm getting to know them. And it's this opportunity to pause and acknowledge ourselves Okay. for something big or small. We just call it a powerhouse moment. It Mm -hmm. can be something trivial. It can be something major. But when I ask what's a recent powerhouse moment that you've had that you want to celebrate right now, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Hmm, a powerhouse moment to celebrate. I would say, you know what? Just saying yes all this week, all last week, just to, to being here, to anything that popped up. I'm so used to being like, no, I'm okay, I'm good. I'll, I'll get back with you and just starting to say yes. I'm just saying yes to, even if I'm, you know, nervous or scared or, you know, being like, I should just stay in my cave. It's fun here, you know? I'm just saying yes more so. I'm celebrating that just the season of being like, yes, I will. I'm doing it. Let's go. Uh, I'm so happy yeah. that we got to connect in a season of yes. yes. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It was awesome. Being here. Thank you. Thank you.